Dr. Eric here talking to you today about male infertility treatments. We're going to go problem by problem and try and address all the treatments available for each of those problems. So for the sake of this video, I'm assuming that you've already been diagnosed with infertility and hopefully your doctor has already done a semen analysis as well as hormone tests and any other tests that may be necessary to make a diagnosis as to what your actual problem is. Now I'm going to take you through the various diagnoses and talk about what the treatment options are for each of those diagnoses. The first one that I want to talk about is low testosterone or hormone abnormalities. With a low testosterone, most people's first gut instinct is, okay, let's give them testosterone. And in fact, I see a lot of patients who come to me who are on testosterone for infertility treatment, but that's the worst thing that you could do in the majority of situations because what it actually does is it shuts down sperm production. In order to understand this, you have to look at the mechanism that controls testosterone production. There's a spot in the brain called the pituitary that produces a hormone called luteinizing hormone or LH. That LH then floats down through the bloodstream to the testicles where certain cells called Leydig cells, which produce testosterone, sense how much LH is in the bloodstream and based on that amount of LH will then produce more or less testosterone. The testosterone that's produced then migrates back up through the bloodstream to the brain where the brain sniffs it and says, okay, that testosterone level is low, just right or high, so I need to make more, less, or the same of the LH to regulate that production of testosterone back and forth. What happens when you give testosterone through injections or a patch or a gel is that you can increase the testosterone value, say from 300 to 1200, but what happens is that the amount of testosterone in the bloodstream hits that number, say 1200, gets sensed by the brain. The brain says, okay, we're doing great on testosterone. Let's ramp down the LH. So the LH that goes back to the testicle is seen as a small amount. So the testicle says, okay, well, I don't need to make any more testosterone because we've got plenty. The problem is in order to create sperm, the testicle needs to have a thousand times more testosterone in it than in the bloodstream. So when you give testosterone, it shuts down the local production of testosterone and so it shuts down production of sperm cells. Testosterone given through patches or injections is going to shut down sperm formation. In order to treat a low testosterone value that may be causing infertility, you actually have to look at treating not with testosterone, but with other medications that stimulate production of that LH hormone that then goes down. The two medications we use most commonly are called clomiphene and human chorionic growth hormone. Both of these medications work centrally on the brain to produce a higher level of that LH hormone, which then goes down to the testicle and encourages or ramps up the testicular production of testosterone, which will hopefully bump up that testosterone level within the testicle, causing the sperm cells to then rev up their production of sperm so that it can raise that sperm count higher than where it was previously. The next problem you may have been diagnosed with is an issue called retrograde ejaculation. Retrograde ejaculation is where instead of the semen being pushed out of the penis, it actually goes backwards and up into the bladder. The next time you pee, the semen that was caught in the bladder will be washed out. You won't see it, feel it, smell it. It doesn't feel weird. It doesn't cause any problems or infections or cancer or anything like that. It's just going to reduce the amount of semen and sperm that you're going to ejaculate during intercourse and then lower the likelihood of pregnancy. Most commonly, retrograde ejaculation is due to medications. Medications that are used for BPH or an enlarged prostate such as Flomax can relax the bladder neck, which when open allows the passage of semen backwards instead of getting pushed forward and out of the penis. In order to fix that problem, we have to tighten up the tone of that bladder neck. The other reason somebody may have retrograde ejaculation is either due to nerve damage or potentially prior surgeries that may also have compromised that bladder neck tightening during ejaculation, leaving the bladder neck open so that the semen passes 
backwards. Some men will respond to a medication called pseudoephedrine, which is commonly found in Sudafed, as that medication can actually work to tighten the bladder neck, resulting in better ejaculation of semen so that it increases the semen volume and the total sperm count. Obstruction is another problem that a lot of men will deal with as far as their infertility. There are a couple different reasons why you may have obstruction. The most obvious is you've had a prior vasectomy and now you have to get it reversed. That obviously causes obstruction because the two vas deferens that travel from the testicle up have been cut or ligated in one way or another to block the flow of sperm. Vasectomy reversal involves taking the ends of the vas deferens and reconnecting them to reestablish that flow. Another reason for obstruction can be congenital absence of the vas deferens. This can occur in certain genetic defects such as cystic fibrosis. In that situation, there's not really a way to reestablish the connection. Rather, you may need to look at assisted reproductive techniques. Another type of obstruction is ejaculatory duct obstruction. The ejaculatory ducts can sometimes become obstructed either from a stone or growth of tissue that can then block the flow of semen out. When that happens, a transurethral resection of the ejaculatory duct can oftentimes open up the pathway and reestablish the proper flow of semen. This procedure is performed by passing a special scope into the penis and then using a resection loop to carve away the obstructed section. In men who have low sperm counts and who otherwise are unable to get their female partner pregnant, assisted reproductive techniques may be necessary. There are several techniques that fall underneath this category. Most commonly, they rely on sperm extraction of some sort. Sometimes this can involve getting washed sperm from the retrograde ejaculate. The way this is done is that a medication may be given prior to ejaculation, and then after ejaculation, the urine of the next urination is collected, washed, and the sperm are then collected from that specimen. Those sperm can then be used. Another way to get sperm is to harvest the sperm directly from the testicle. This can be done in various approaches, either percutaneous, meaning a needle through the skin, or in open techniques where the testicle is actually delivered up and out of the skin and then pieces of the testicle or the epididymis may be taken or fluid from the testicle or epididymis may be taken to harvest the sperm that can be then used in intrauterine insemination or in IVF. Intrauterine insemination will involve taking semen from the male and placing it directly into the uterus of the female partner. Other techniques such as ICSI, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, are more costly but may be necessary in the event that less invasive techniques will not work. Hopefully this video has given you a little bit of background on some of the various treatment options that we have for certain types of male infertility.